Oh yeah. We got quite the weather front coming in here in Florida. So it looks like it's already raining over there where I got a ride. But uh, Don Pond, the group ride is this morning. So um, let's see how this goes. All right. I'm not even having to pedal. This wind is blowing me about 20 miles an hour down to downtown from Miami Beach. So it's gonna be a hell of a day, I think. Storm front coming in, kind of nice. All right, let's do this. Don Pond ride this morning. So that ride is usually 60, 80, sometimes over 100 riders, and uh, usually going at 30 plus miles an hour. Looks very different today. Why? Because people are scared of the weather. All right, that ride did not go as I planned. I thought I was going to show up, meet some like minded riders who just love to shred in pouring rain, and we we're going to have a shred session out here in the pouring rain but no it's nine o'clock so yeah it's nine o'clock on a saturday morning and um there's not a single roadie in sight not a single bike so you know how rare that is saturday morning out here in key biscayne usually there's just like hundreds and hundreds of riders different groups riding out here uh but it is what it is so um turned out to be sunny god damn it anyway i think what i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna um take these shoes off and i'm gonna go just walk that way into the jungle off a of bear cut and um it's low tide right now so i can do that all right let's do it yeah max speed 40 miles an hour, um, 39. Anyway, uh, obviously, as you know, I'm used to going a lot faster than that. Uh, but anyway, it's just one of those mornings. So um, at this point, I mean, there's probably a whole bunch of people sitting at home regretting not having um, gone out this morning. Don't be one of those people, you know. Ride your bike, um, your bike, uh, embrace the cold embrace the heat you know i hate the cold it's a weakness you know those of you that know me know that but if there's extreme cold there's extreme snow whatever it is you know it's all the more motivation for me to go because um i find it very interesting this is right next to miami miami's right over there there's uh miami beach is right there and then um downtown is right there so how cool is that? I mean, that's just one of the many reasons that I love living here is the fact that you just can't beat the locations right next to the city. Um, New York City is kind of like that too, actually. Go over to George Washington and um, go to places that are amazing over there too for riding, both the 9W or the 9A. <laughs> Not many people know about the 9A. All right, let's see, into the water. It's low tide right now. You can see the tide is coming in quickly. So I want to make this walk. I have to walk around that point. I guess what I have to say about riding, in addition to the weather and going into all kinds of different weather, is the fact that you should also go to places that you've never been before. Go somewhere near where you live but where you've never been before even if you have to you know do something like this and you know like hike and bike it like this with your bike uh, i mean i'm lucky this morning this happens to be low tide um otherwise this water would be uh up to my waist so um you know i got a question for you have you gone and explored everything around where you live really or is there that peninsula that you don't really know anything about what's on there or you know maybe there's a farm or there's some really cool park 
that you don't know about. Maybe you have to ride your bike off road for a ways to explore it. But have you really explored everything that um, you should, you know, and that you uh, could? Because, you know, it's also mental. I mean, it's a big motivator when you wake up and your mind says, hey, um, what are we doing today for the ride? Not, oh, I know what we're doing today. We're doing the same route. We're gonna see the same people. The same people are gonna attack and the same people are gonna break away, you know, and then the same people are gonna win the group sprint or whatever. Um, that's great, you know, I love doing that. You know, those rides are a lot of fun, but if you uh, do the same doggone ride every day, then um, you're not gonna really like look forward to riding and uh, to the adventure, you know, to what the hell um, can happen, you know? You're not gonna, I mean, going to uh, new places near where you've been, you know, forcing yourself to do that, not ride in a routine, uh, means that you're gonna see things you never did before that you can explore. One of my motivations for exploring um, really cool places and things that are off the beaten path is the fact that um, I have a number of guests. A lot of you know, people do come to visit me um, in Miami, naturally. <laughs> And so I get to show them, you know, an experience when we go out riding a tour that um, nobody else can give them, you know, but me. Um, I take a lot of pride in that. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So I know people in New York City, lifetime residents of New York City, who have never ridden the 9A. You know, they've never ridden places that... Um, we know about, you know, there's a park in Brooklyn, it's not Prospect, I forget, it's it's kind of a gnarly path through there, I forget what it is, but they've never ridden that. Um, Austin Horse actually took me on that one day, and, um, you know, he's somebody who's done what I'm talking about, explored like hell, all these different places. So, ow, damn, I just stubbed my toe on something. Uh, okay, yeah, and I'm dipping the originate wheels in the uh, salt water. All right, that was the deepest part of what we'll see today, um, is that little point there. So, you know, there are people in Miami who um, have never even been out here. You know, they've never been uh, to Bearcut. You know, they live right there, where they live downtown. And... I don't know, you know, I I mean, heck, I used to explore this place back in the 80s. And, um, you know, it was a lot different and then, obviously. They didn't have the high bridge. It was a drawbridge instead of that huge bridge. Um, lawless people, obviously. But uh, I used to sketch back then, too. Um, so, but, you know, I can say that about people who live in Beijing. They've never been really outside of Beijing. Uh, all their lives, you know, they're great athletes. They're really skilled riders, but um, You know, don't be one of those You know, Go uh, somewhere that uh, Will surprise you intrigue you and again, you know, I guess the most important thing about all of this is Will set your mind up for your mind to say hey Lucas What are we doing today? Uh, the funny thing about that ride too that I was on is there are so few people um, That it didn't really have the energy that those uh, larger rides do. Um, I can't really ride, you know, that slow either. I just, I just can't do it. Um, <laughs> so those are great riders, you know, that I, that I was riding with, but uh, different pace. You know, I could have, I suppose, got at the front and hammers and whatever, but today just wasn't one of those days. I'm just not feeling it. Um, that's just how it goes. But as I said, I'm feeling this place, you know. There's just something about the nature around here. I love the tropics. I love it, love it. I love hot weather, humidity. You know, we all have our strengths. Um, I know people that just love the cold. They can't get enough of the cold. Um, so again, I mean, I'm the opposite. You know, I can do anything in the heat. You know, I can go ride in Vegas and, you know, 100 plus Fahrenheit, 40 plus, you know, Celsius weather and um, for hours. Oh shit, I just stepped on, I don't know what. 
um, and be fine with it. Pretty cool place. You know, when I was young, I'm talking teenager out here, um, I used to see a lot of fish. Now uh, the fish are all pretty much gone. It's crazy. There's like no fish out here. Uh, very few. Um, you know, this electric car thing is interesting because the fact is the electric car, you know, it's touted as being really great for the environment, but the mining that it takes, the lithium and all these other chemicals it takes and all these factories to, you know, make these batteries and then how you dispose of the batteries, very bad. I mean, that fact alone means that um, there's like a lot more pollution from these electric cars than meets the eye. Here's the interesting thing though for us cyclists, that pollution is taking place somewhere else. It's not taking place where we're riding. If we're riding in a lot of traffic, let's say that tomorrow all the electric, all the cars in New York City are electric cars. So, you know, you're not inhaling that pollution anymore as a rider. You're just riding amongst these cars that are going by battery around you. Um, not by exhaust, not by fossil fuels. So in that sense, you know, for the cyclists, the electric cars are amazing. I mean, it's a lot better for our lungs. Uh, but again, the overall effect on the environment is um, pretty bad. Oh, well, there was a fish. I don't know what kind of fish. I remember I was out in Cape Cod and I went for a ride and I filmed it and it was through the salt marsh and I said there's a bunch of insects around and then a couple of comments kindly said, oh, those are fiddler crabs. So, um, you know, I uh, sometimes don't um, research things um, the way that I actually could. Right there, I mean, so long ago, you know, there would have been fish out there. There would have been other animals in there. Um, used to be uh, a little more dangerous to walk around the mangroves because of the fact that you don't know what the heck was going to get you. You know, nowadays, unfortunately, uh, a lot of the wildlife has been destroyed so because of development and whatnot. Um, Hey, let me, by the way, um, give you a pro tip on something. So, thought it was going to rain today. I didn't really care. You know, I don't really care if I get stuff wet. And the bikes are made for it. If you've got a really good bike, then, um, you know, that's part of what you're paying for is to be able to ride in any conditions that you want to um, with minimal, no damage to the bike. Um, but these shoes, I hate wet shoes. So what I do is I just use one of these. That's right, it's a little travel fan. And you see the size of it? I can take it with me anywhere. Um, you know, I have a bigger fan, but this is the one that I take on the road. I can hook it up to a battery or um, I can plug it into an outlet. Well, I've talked about weather. I've talked about location for riding, but I haven't talked about, um, you know, riding with groups. So, uh, ride with as many different groups as possible. You know, guys will say that there are certain, you know, road groups, roadies that are inexperienced and, you know, they'll crash and they're really dangerous to ride with. Well, are they? Or is that you, you know? Um, if you're not skilled enough to actually avoid crash um, around unskilled riders, you don't see things coming, you don't have that foresight, then you need to question how good you are at riding. You should feel comfortable with riding with pretty much anybody. You know, if riders are really dangerous, um, which I've seen, then you give them some room. You know, if they're fast, well, hopefully you're fast enough that um, you can give them that room, you know, and still keep up with them on the ride. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm dressed you know, in this kit, you know, from, you know, like a roadie. And I'm riding with whoever, you know, it doesn't matter. And I um, can't tell you, you know, the amount of times that I've gotten the compliment. People say, 
wow, um, you know, most roadies are really uptight. They're snobs, you know, you're just, you're really cool. And um, those are the kinds of people that I love to ride around with. And the people, you know, they recognize that. So step out of your comfort zone for riding and um, disregard the group, you know, regard the values. The values are um, building something. You're building community, you know, um, through, you know, cycling. And that's something that um, I can't believe uh, the job that this city has done at that. So, and worldwide it's happening too. You know, yeah, you have this explosion of riders and, you know, people are coming to go. I mean, I just told you, you know, I've been riding out here since the 80s. And so, the um, thing about that is I have seen generations and generations of riders just come and go. It's ridiculous how many people I have seen. Wow. Um, that guy is obviously not somebody who comes and goes. He's uh, he got some pretty good skills on that thing. Um, but uh, any, huh. wow, nice. Anyway, the thing about this is how good does it feel to actually master something that you're doing you know uh i mean it's amazing because you impart that knowledge uh that's very significant yeah i'm an influencer okay but um the very significant part about being an influencer is that i'm a curator i take the best of what i've learned over the years and i take my mistakes and i show those to you i don't hide my fuck ups in my videos as you guys know but being a master at something means being able to recognize those things and then use them to improve in the future, you know, and admitting to them. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I've had my share of my fuck ups and I will. I mean, I take a lot of risks riding. I'll take a lot of risks trading. I take a lot of risks, you know, doing um, whatever the heck it is I'm doing really. But master cycling, have your discipline. And there's no better feeling, honestly, than mastering something in life. So many people, are just not good um, at anything. They do all these different things. They're doing this and they're doing that and they're getting their, you know, uh, certification here and a license there and they're exploring this and they're dabbling in that, you know, and so they're jack of all trades and master at none. Well, I might not be that well-rounded, but, um, you know, I damn well am a master um, at the riding at this point after this many decades of perpetual motion. So anyway, um, riding with groups again that will make you a lot better that'll make you a much better rider to ride with um sometimes just outright difficult groups to ride with that's okay you know thank them because what that means is that they're improving a muscle group or you know a thought process that group is improving something that you never would have thought that they um would have been able to help you with but inadvertently they do try it you'll be very surprised i've used skills that i didn't even know i had because i've ridden with people that have done things that i never would have expected you guys okay yeah thank you so much yeah, yeah you can see the tide coming in crazy fast now uh it's unusual to actually have this low of a tide uh it's very beautiful out here but um very soon uh, around this bend we're going to arrive at the fossilized reef and the dock that overlooks it and that'll conclude the ride but um you know i guess that's what happens you know when one thing doesn't go as planned um you adapt you change it up and you uh do something else you know like this talk that i've been meaning to have with you but i guess i've just been so busy caught up in the action and you know staying in the fast lane all the time that um i haven't really um done this so anyway this is the fossilized reef you know this is the stuff that you see when you venture out oh look at how beautiful it is out here <laughs> walking on this stuff ugh, is painful um i should have surf shoes you know something to protect my feet it is a little jagged but whatever um by the way, this dock here, this is it. Uh, so you can actually 
ride out here. You can ride your bike out here and um, it's pretty easy to uh, get to this dock and to this overlook. And um, any time of day, it's just beautiful. It's most beautiful at sunset, obviously, but sometimes we come out here. And again, I've just brought riders out here. This path connects across the main road out there, um, Key Biscayne. And you know, they've never been out here. Live fast, ride fast, and um, of course, die last.